Ukrainian and Russian are not the same language, though they are closely related. But what makes them different? I want to share my insights on how to tell these languages apart. I have a rudimentary understanding of Russian. I can understand a lot of colloquial discourse and carry on simple conversation, while my understanding of Ukrainian is yet much more limited. While listening to Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, I've wondered, when is he speaking Ukrainian or Russian? Since he, like so many other Ukrainians, is bilingual. Now, in addition to my own inexperience with both languages, part of the reason for my confusion is that I know that Ukraine has a huge number of native and L2 Russian speakers, and quite a few Ukrainians speak a mix of both standard languages. And later I'll talk more in detail about that. Thus, when I hear spoken Ukrainian, my immediate impression is usually, oh, that sounds like Russian, except I can't understand it. My familiarity with Russian is still too limited to be able to recognize distinct accents or dialects of the language. Thus, when hearing Ukrainian, Russian spoken by Ukrainians, or a mix of the two, until very recently, I could not tell you if the words were a form of standard Russian with an accent I could not identify, or were indeed a truly different language. I would certainly be able to tell you that the language was East Slavic, a group of languages which includes Russian, Ukrainian, and Belarusian, but not much more. So, in order to spare myself further embarrassment in not being able to tell apart the tongue of some 40 million native speakers, nearly 100 million speakers worldwide, I've decided to study a bit of Ukrainian and also to share my insights with you, so you too can learn how to tell these two beautiful languages from one another. The written language is probably the easiest way to tell standard Ukrainian from Russian. Both use the Cyrillic alphabet, but each has special letters that don't occur in the other. Ukrainian, for example, has the letter E, which looks and sounds like the letter I in many Latin alphabets, while no such shape occurs in Russian. The vowel sound E, instead in Russian, is represented by this letter, which looks like a backwards Latin N. Take the word for toy. In Ukrainian, it's igrushka, while in Russian, it's igrushka. Naturally, keep in mind that I don't speak either of these languages terribly well, so you'll have to listen to native speakers if you want to get a more authentic pronunciation. The same shape of the E of Russian is used in Ukrainian, but this letter is pronounced like I in Ukrainian, something like rib in English, or sometimes like U in Russian, such as in the word for sun, which is syn. The Ukrainian word for sun has nearly the same pronunciation. It's spelled like this, and it's pronounced sin. So we have syn and sin. Written Russian also stands out because it has the letter yo, which doesn't occur in Ukrainian, where the sound occurs less frequently, which is probably why they don't have a special letter for it. But it does occur, and it's represented by the digraph yo. The letter e occurs in Russian, but not in Ukrainian. It looks like a backwards e. In Russian, this sound is e. It can actually ha range from a more open e to more closed e, depending on the environment. But Ukrainian represents the sound of e by what looks like a normal Latin letter e, e. While the letter e shape of Russian, that makes the sound ye. But ye in Ukrainian is written like this. It looks like something like a letter E, but more curved, and not written backwards like the Russian one. And it's only found in Ukrainian. So Russian has this unique letter, and Ukrainian has this unique letter. And they also make different sounds, e and ye. Cool, huh? One more letter difference that really makes Ukrainian stand out is in the name of Ukraine itself, Ukraina. And this letter, yi, looks like this, looks like a letter I with two dots on top of it. And now you should have enough information to be able to distinguish these two languages when written. Let's take, for example, the first article of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Which one is which? If you guess this one is Russian and this one is Ukrainian, you're right. Pozdravlaju, vitaju. But why? Well, the Russian has these two unique letters, yo and u. Neither of these occur in Ukrainian, while Ukrainian has this unique letter, i, as well as yi, and neither of these occur in Russian. Let's listen to what they sound like.
Всі люди народжуються вільними і рівними у своїй гідності та правах. Вони наділені розумом і совістю і повинні діяти у відношенні один до одного в дусі братерства. Все люди рождаются свободными и равными в своем достоинстве и правах. Они наделены разумом и совестью и должны поступать в отношении друг друга в духе братства. Now, what about Belarusian? Belarusian is the third major e Slavic language. And it has some of the letters that are found in Ukrainian, like E. But it doesn't have the E of Ukrainian. Belarusian also has this letter, which stands for a W sound, and it is unique to Belarusian. So armed, just with this information, you should be able to distinguish any text of a significant length of Russian, Ukrainian, and even Belarusian. From the perspective of languages that we know well or that we speak natively, it's rather easy to pick up on differences of related languages or dialects or accents as we call them. Even in American English, native speakers of English can usually hear pretty obvious, some sort of ridiculous New York accent. In this age of uncertainty and confusion, <laughs> a man begins to ask himself certain questions. How you doing there, dude? Or some sort of, you know, more Western type accent and what you want to understand. You know, and, and those are those superficial characteristics that end up being pretty obvious. But even related languages, like say the Scots language. <laughs> Scots has a lot of really interesting phonetic characteristics, but that intonation, that sort of um, personality that it has is what stands out to us. And German and Swedish, we can pick up on the sort of intonational pattern as something which distinguishes these languages because they are relatively close to, say, say me as a native speaker of English, so I can really hear those things rather easily without having to do too much work. Whereas, hearing the difference between Italian and Spanish for people who have almost no experience with either may be pretty difficult, or even more difficult, for example, being able to distinguish between Spanish and Catalan, or say, standard Italian and Neapolitan. Not everybody will pick up on those things right away, even though to native speakers of any of those languages or language varieties will say, you're crazy, how could you possibly think those are similar? And the subjectivity is something that comes to mind to me as I am trying to understand the difference between a language I've listened to for a lot of years, namely Russian, and kind of no, and a language that I don't know very well, namely Ukrainian, because aesthetically they have a lot of things in common, but I know that native speakers almost certainly would be able to say, oh, you're crazy, how could you think that Ukrainian sounds like Russian, or that any of the Slavic languages sound similar, when in reality they probably sound just so inherently different to them. No doubt that is just as true in that language group. This is a very perceptual, familiarity, subjective thing. And uh, Faria, on his channel, has an excellent explanation of how this works with music. And I really think you should watch this video because it's fascinating. And also to subscribe to his channel because these cultural perceptual differences are just so excellently described in this particular video. That said, one of the ways that I've been able to tell the sort of aesthetic character that distinguishes Russian from Ukrainian, well, it seems to be in the stressed syllables. Russian stressed syllables tend to be lengthened noticeably, while in Ukrainian they tend to be more similar in length to unstressed syllables. Listen again to the first article of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Всі люди народжуються вільними і рівними у своїй гідності та правах. Вони наділені розумом і совістю і повинні діяти у відношенні один до одного в дусі братерства. Всі люди рождаються свободними і равними в своєму достоинстві і правах. Вони наділені розумом і совістю і повинні поступати в відношенні друг друга в духі братства. Indeed, this emphasis on stress syllables and de-emphasis on unstressed syllables creates one of the most striking differences in Russian phonology with respect to Ukrainian. Russian has a great deal more vowel reduction and mutation. Vowels will get raised or lowered or centralized or palatalized in all sorts of cool ways. Ukrainian instead has a very lovely vowel system that tends much less towards reduction and mutation. There are many examples of this, but one of the most salient is that unstressed letter O, O in Russian, can be either A 
or a schwa, an e, uh, depending on the environment. Take the word that's used for cool or great as an interjection. It's spelled the same in both languages. In Russian, it's pronounced zdorova, but in Ukrainian, it's pronounced zdorovo. I perceive a few different things here. For the O, the first O in Russian, zdorova, sounds pretty closed to me. Sounds like a pretty closed or at least true mid O. The second letter O is a schwa, it's just a. Uh, and the last one is a pretty open A uh, sound, zdorova. While Ukrainian, it has essentially the same pronunciation in all three positions. A relatively open O sound, zdorovo. And here we can observe that the Ukrainian letter, which looks like a letter B, in Russian, this is the sound for a letter V, a V. Well, it's definitely different from that Russian sound of V in some ways. Like I mentioned, in Russian, it's regularly realized as V, like English letter V, but in Ukrainian, it has a broad range of realizations, depending on the environment, the speaker, and even the moment. The genitive plural of years is rokiv, and I've heard this pronounced by the same native speaker in these different ways. Rokiv, 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 in different times. So sort of ranging from the labial dental true v sound to a labial dental approximant, the v, to something that's a bilabial rounded thing, kind of like in Lucian pronunciation or even uh, something more approximate like Spanish and getting pretty close to something like a, a W sound. It almost never sounds truly like the end members I have here, like a true V or a true W sound. It's almost certainly every time something in between. And the exciting and beautiful variety is probably indicative of a similar range of sounds, possible for the Latin letter V and also the intervocalic B starting in the first century AD for certain speakers of classical Latin. Another feature, different from Russian, that we can in fact hear in this word, is pronunciations like rokiv. Well, that ends with a final voiced consonant. And the capital of Ukraine, which we call Kiev, well, this pronunciation in English is mostly based on the transliteration from Russian. And these letters would be equivalent to K-I-E-V, so that makes Kiev. But in standard Russian, this is in fact pronounced Kiev, Kiev. And note that the final letter V sound is devoiced into an F sound. But in Ukrainian, it's Kyiv. And this sound Kyiv, or other possibilities for the realization of, uh, of this particular letter, which we were just talking about, in any case, it's voiced every time. And this is quite remarkable, since most Slavic languages devoice the majority of final consonants, a linguistic feature known as final obstruent devoicing. Russian has this in common with German, such as in the word for away, vek, which is pronounced with the final k sound, vek, and not veg. Thus, with respect to final voiced obstruents, English is to Ukrainian as German is to Russian. For more on this, I recommend an excellent discussion over on Jackson Crawford's channel. Catalan also devoices final obstruents, but Spanish does not. Speaking of Catalan, I would compare the phonetic similarity and mutual intelligibility as found between Catalan and Spanish to that observed between speakers of Russian and Ukrainian, actually. That is to say, clearly different languages, but with a good deal in common. In reality, the debate between what constitutes a dialect and what constitutes a language is mostly a question of subjectivity, and it's normally informed a lot by politics. But for my lengthy discussion on this topic, I highly recommend my video on dialect versus language. Although Catalan to Russian is as Spanish to Ukrainian has some favorable similarities, this comparison breaks down with other factors, like lexical similarity. For example, Catalan has about 85% lexical similarity with Portuguese and Spanish. In fact, it even has more with Italian. But surprisingly, Ukrainian only has 62% lexical similarity with Russian. It has much more with Belarusian at 84% and even more with Polish at 70%. <laughs> it has more in common lexically even with the Slovak language at 66% than it does with Russian. When it comes to final obstruent devoicing, here is another example. The word under is pid in Ukrainian, but it's bot or in fact 
usually bat because it's unstressed most of the time in Russian. And the word for without in Ukrainian it's bez, but in Russian it's bies. One more note on the obvious pronunciation differences between Ukrainian and Russian. Ukrainian has this letter. In Russian, this letter is realized as g, as a voiced velar occlusive, similar to our letter g much of the time. But in Ukrainian, it is fricativized, and it usually retains its voicing. So what does this actually sound like? Well, sometimes it sounds like a voiced velar fricative, r, a lot like is found in modern Greek. But sometimes it's entirely debucalized into h, uh, like in ah, uh, which would be the voiced equivalent of the h uh, sound, the h sound of English. Now, based on my own listening, I would say that it seems to wander quite a bit. But whatever its realization, if you keep an open ear, you should be able to say, aha, that is Ukrainian and not Russian. When listening to these languages, I have identified a few key words that you can keep your ears open for to help you recognize Russian or Ukrainian, respectively. Take the word for yes. In Ukrainian, it's tak, whereas in Russian, it's da. The word tak also occurs in Russian, but it means thus, and you won't hear it nearly as often as you will hear it in Ukrainian. The word for what or that, the conjunction, in Ukrainian, it's sho, but in Russian, it's sto. So sho versus sto, that T sound is the characteristic to keep your ears open for, especially if you hear an expression like, I believe that, or I think that, or I know that. You'll hear a sho in Ukrainian, but a sto or shta in Russian. Shta, of course, because when it's not stressed, as this word, in fact, when it's a conjunction, it's not often stressed, it'll just be shta in Russian. A compound word that uses this simple word for both languages is the word for because. In Ukrainian, it's tomu shto, tomu shto. But in Russian, it's putamu shta. And here we can see many realizations of that letter O. So we have p, ta, mu, shta, putamushta. And that means because in Russian, whereas tomushcho is the same word in Ukrainian. The word for why in Ukrainian is chomu. And in Russian, it's pochimu. So these are similar sounding words, obviously, but they do have a very distinct characteristic, each one of them. The word for who in Ukrainian is khto, but in Russian it's kto. Where in Ukrainian is de. In Russian it's gdie. How or as or like in Ukrainian it's yak, but in Russian it's kak. In fact, there are compounds such as yaki in Ukrainian and kakoi in Russian. He, she, it, they in Ukrainian, vin. Vona, vono, voni. In Russian, on, ana, ano, ani. A super common word that we hear all the time in either language is the word that introduces this or that or it, often at the beginning of a phrase to say this is or that is or it is. And in Ukrainian, it's ts. In Russian, it's eta. Now, this is just scratching the surface of what's different between these two languages. But as a novice in both, I really see these as some of the most salient characteristics. And now that we have this knowledge, let's try to figure out what language President Zelensky is using here. Сегодня я инициировал телефонный разговор с президентом Российской Федерации. Результат тишина. Хотя тишина должна быть на Донбассе. Поэтому сегодня я хочу обратиться ко всем гражданам России. Не как президент. Я обращаюсь к российским гражданам как гражданин Украины. Are you able to figure out which language this is? Well, if you guessed Russian, you're right. But how can we know just from hearing a few words? Well, here we hear him say как, which means like or as or how. Не как президент. Не как президент. And like we were studying before, the word как in Ukrainian is yak, so this must be Russian. Another thing that gives it away is the pronunciation of the word president. Не как президент. Премьер-министр Шлагаль тут, Подоляк тут, президент тут. Всі ми тут, 
наші військові тут, громадяни суспільства тут, всі ми тут. Не як президент. Президент тут. The word for president is actually spelled the same in both languages, but in Russian we see президент with some really cool vowel stuff going on, whereas Ukrainian is президент, more e sounding in general instead of this e e e, it's e e e. Президент тут. Не как президент. Президент тут. Another thing that gives it away is the pronunciation of the word Russia. Поэтому сегодня я хочу обратиться ко всем гражданам России. The word of Russia in Russian is Россия. And this has that characteristic change of O to A when it's not stressed, Rasi. But in Ukrainian, it's Rossi. Pretty similar, even though the final vowels are a little different. The biggest thing that stands out to me is the fact that it's Ra and not Ro in Russian. Це терор. Вони збираються ще більше бомбити наші українські міста. Вони збираються ще підступніше вбивати наших дітей. Це зло, яке прийшло на нашу землю і яке треба знищити. Вони брехали, що не будуть чіпати цивільне населення. Але з перших годин вторгнення російські війська б'ють по цивільній інфраструктурі. Now what language is President Zelensky speaking here? Що вони роблять? Це помста. The word for what, що, and the word for this, це, are heard in these two sentences. Що вони роблять? Це помста. І вони відкрили справжнє обличчя. Це терор. We hear це again for this is terror, as well as і вони, and they. І вони відкрили справжнє обличчя. Це терор. Що, це, вони are all Ukrainian words. Their Russian equivalents are что, это, and они. Вони збираються ще більше бомбити наші українські міста. Вони збираються ще підступніше вбивати наших дітей. Це зло. Це зло is Ukrainian. In Russian, it's это зло. For one more test of our East language distinguishing skills, try to guess what this boy is speaking, a refugee from Kiev. А папу оставили в Києві. Папа будет продавать что-то, будет помогать нашим героям, нашим войскам, нашим войскам будет помогать, может даже будет воевать. Мы шли где-то три часа, и вот вы нас спасли. Я думала, что мы уже будем идти эти два-три дня. Я, я бы думала, что мы будем идти целый день. Но вот оказалось, что вы нас выручили. What language is this young man speaking? Well, this is what I hear. Я думала, что мы уже будем идти эти два-три дня. Я, я бы думала, что мы будем идти целый день. Remember that the conjunction that in Ukrainian is что, but in Russian it's что, or unstressed it's что. Я думала, что мы, я бы думала, что мы будем... This brave young man is speaking Russian. I said I would talk about the mixing of spoken Ukrainian and Russian in Ukraine, called surzhik. This phenomenon has been going on in the country for many centuries. Most notably, under the rule of Russian Tsar Peter the Great, the printing and public use of Ukrainian was banned. Books were burned. Ukrainian speakers were oppressed, beaten, imprisoned. As I spoke about in my dialect versus language video, sadly, this form of linguistic oppression is hardly new. Thus, Ukrainian itself today having been further suppressed during the time of the Soviet Union, has adopted quite a lot of terms, and even some pronunciation habits, from Russian. And indeed, Ukrainians today are mostly bilingual, capable of fluent understanding, if not speaking, of both languages. Ukraine is a bilingual country. For many centuries, indeed for more than a thousand years, Ukraine 
has been the confluence of many different cultures and languages, and it still is today. Ukrainians speak Russian, they speak Ukrainian, and they speak other languages too. Steve Kaufman, with whom I had an interview not long ago, has announced that on his platform, Link, he will make available Ukrainian learning tools, even for free. So check that out. Years of familiarity with Russian and my new appreciation of Ukrainian have shown me how fascinating, beautiful, and important these and other Slavic languages are in the world. The linguistic plurality of nations like Ukraine is not a unique phenomenon and demonstrates that the link with country, language, and culture is not as simple as some would make it out to be. Mir is voboda. Mir is voboda.